if you remember. And we weren't playing very well. And we were hanging by the, by the fingernails over at Lewiston. And a play happened. Tracy and his, uh, let's call it lumbering style, <laughs> trundled down the floor. And I don't know, I think, the, who made the steal? Who made the pass to him? It's probably me, coach. <laughs> We don't need to check the film. But you know, Tracy blocked and he came to me. Okay. Stay out of this, Brad. <laughs> he makes this move down the floor with all of his sheer speed and catches the ball. And no, I defy anybody in the gym to say they expected it. Went down and he went up and dropped that baby. And the crowd exploded. I mean exploded. What did Tracy do? In his typical trundling, jotted back, he wasn't doing this. You know, here he comes back with that grin. <laughs> All of us remember that grin. Comes back, and everybody's going like, and here's Tracy just standing there, just. And he, that single, that probably had to be the biggest play of the year, without yeah. a doubt, because it turned that, you know, it turned that game around. It turned, it got the crowd into the game. It got you, and what we do? Then we blew through and went one right on. And that that see that speaks volumes about about you as a group. I don't know. I was interested to hear. I appreciated what Alan and Terry and people like that had to say. That you were a part of the team, and that's why this team was so good. We were talking this afternoon. You know, our practices were some, a lot of times tougher than games we played. They really were. You know, we used to substitute a lot. Brad still gives me briefs and we just average 90, 100 points. But that's, that, I'm not sure, you know, because when we substitute, sometimes the score picked up. Because that's how good you guys were. You played against the best every day. You made them better. They made you better. And so there was no hesitation about putting people in. A lot of times we start substituting the second quarter. We start substituting the middle of the third quarter. Because that's the kind of people you work with. Now, I'm sure that there were times when uh, there might have been a minor disagreement too, but the, the closeness of this group is just, it doesn't happen very often. It doesn't happen very often. That's why you're such a unique group. To see you now and to see the uh, respect you have for each other, that just doesn't happen much anymore. It just doesn't. You don't have the closeness that you guys have. That, that's what made it so very special. I've got something I want to read for you at the close that says it all about you. But uh, I'm not, I've got a couple other things I want to touch on. But, you know, as we went around, uh, people would write me letters about you. They see you play. They send me a letter. I've got my uncle, I've got a book bound with about that thick. There's letters that people wrote me about Havana basketball. And a lady and her son were at Western Hall when we played in the super sectional. And she said, we stood, she wrote the letter to me, she said, we stood up there and watched, and she said, we could see the excitement, she said, we watched she play. And she said, standing there, they were at a wrestling meet, and she says, we became Havana fans. She said, why did we become Havana fans? We, were, we appreciated the way they played, the way they looked, how they interacted with each other on the she said, we tried to come to Champaign to see you play after watching that game. That was how impressed we were with what you did and how you did. You know, and I, I, travel, I travel a pretty wide circle. And people, at that time, if you remember, we were on WGM. People all over the country would see. You know, I'd have friends and people call from Arizona, whatever. There's a story about uh, Steve Williams, mother's brother. He was in Louisiana. Walking around, walking through the mall. Look down. And you were on, Havana was on TV, so what did he do? He went and rented a motel room so he could sit and watch the state tournament. <laughs> in, somewhere in Louisiana. So that, that was the kind of reach that you guys had for people. You know, you touched so many people. Uh, like you say, when we, when we came back, the mutual, the respect that people had for you, People standing on their doors, you know, out on their porches waving at you as you went by, you know, from off the highway. And heaven forbid, 
Mason City actually came down to the highway. <laughs> <laughs> sure, San Joe was always there, you know, saying, let's, let's pan, pan, you know, the firing. But there, when we got to the Mason City turn off, the Mason City people were there. Now that says a little bit, folks. And of course, the former people. And then when we hit Havana, it was like a sea of maroon and white and the noise and, you know, you guys, you guys, are, I know at that time you didn't realize what you were experiencing, but now you realize it. You can't, you can't buy that. You don't have enough money to buy the experiences that you went through. The people you know, you were very fortunate. I was very fortunate. Uh, Rachel and I thank our lucky stars every day that, that our experiences are there. That, like you said, like Doug says, Doug and Brad called them in. That's home. You know, we didn't live there all lot. We were fortunate enough to get the opportunity to come there. But it's home. It'll always be that. Because when you go through the things that we went through together, it'll always be home. I don't care where you move, where you go, you're always going to have that blue and white, have that red and got to your heart. Whether it's a little mad duck or whatever. You know, tattoos have been in both back then. <laughs> <laughs> It was special. A couple other things. I know Dawson back there filming, and we saw some highlights, but we didn't get to see Dawson shoot a free throw. I, why weren't those included in the highlights? <laughs> Hang on, coach. I'll take care of that later. Show, show, I have a show. Show me your left you, you know, when you shoot a free throw, you're supposed to put your hand. Like this. See how you get your hand. And then when you just stand, you stand like that. Like that. Pronation. I'm sorry. Dolls can't do that. <laughs> he can't. He physically, I mean, he cannot do it. <laughs> it's not just a physical character. Proof. <laughs> Just like he does it. See? Look out for his hand back. He can't get it back. That's anymore. wrong. That's wrong. <laughs> but you see, Dawson shoot the free throw. I'd like to measure his heart. Would you like to measure his heart? And what he did for that basketball team? You know, we had we had some race horses, we had some work horses, we had all kinds of horses. And but it took all of you playing to your ability. And Doss knew, I can talk about Doss not making free throws, but at the same time I have to tell you what he did to Griffith from, from Balakai. Griffith would have paid me to take him out and get him off. <laughs> he didn't want to, when, he, when he came off the floor, Griffith just, oh, thank goodness. And then he scored about 10 or 15 at the end, didn't he? I mean, because he, he, it was relief. But that was the kind of people we had, the people that worked in practice, the people that did the things.